to Corfu. Oh, I had an early night last night, a bit of dinner, just sat in the bar. Um, very early night because this morning, one of the only things I don't like about cruising, and there is many as you can probably guess, is that sometimes with the excursions there's some very early mornings. So last night we lost an hour, so we went forward an hour. And I have to meet in the theatre today at 8.15, which is really 7.15, which means getting up at 6.30. So, oh, yeah, it was it, it was needed to have an early night anyway, because everyone here has been, not, has been so lovely that we've had a few late nights. So um, it was needed. So now I would say I'm refreshed, but it's still very early. Um, going to go and have a look what's outside I think we, well I'm pretty sure I know we are we're next to a Regency Seven Seas I don't know which one I'm going to see if we can see so I'm going to go up on the top have a look and see what boat that is maybe grab a piece of fruit and then I've got to meet in the theatre at 8.15 we are going today we're going wine tasting uh, well going to the old town wandering around Corfu and then wine tasting but again, it's just a morning trip. And then this afternoon I've booked the retreat. So as I said, I've never been in it before. So um, just so more mainly for you guys though, that you can see what the treat's like because I'm not a sunbaver at all. So it probably won't last very long in there, but we'll give it a go. So let's let's head off. Let's go and see what Regency looks like first. Oh, there she is. Still can't see what she is. She's obviously moved to serve at Seven Seas, but which one, I don't know. So that's a smaller, almost pretty much all-inclusive ship. All suites. But they're definitely smaller ships. That's quite a large one for what they call boutiques sailing. Let's have a look. Into sort of a sea. No, that's it says sevens. I'll have a look when I get off. I do want to give Regency a go. Comment below if you've done Regency and what you think. I'm sure it's a beautiful, lovely experience. I've done Seabourn, which is similar, um, many years ago. So, yeah, another one for the list. Goodness, my list is getting long. Right, let's go grab some fruit. Let's get in the theatre. Let's get this show on the road. First view of Crete. So it is um, a Seven Seas Voyager. Oh, it's pretty out here. Green 23. That worked out. Horse-drawn carriages, <laughs> hop on, hop off, and taxis, and uh, oh, too many. So rather quiet today, but a um, warmer. Well, this we can say. And uh, I mean, we are complaining. And that's the first view of the Ionian Sea. That's one more thing which uh, is quite confusing when uh, taking a cruise. Normally, this thing that every day. Well, let's say you wake up the first day and uh, you are somewhere, you're sailing around the Aegean Sea, then maybe the following morning you wake up in the Ionian Sea and then in the Adriatic and then the Sea of Crete and then God knows where. So yes. it's really confusing. Wow. So uh, it's understandable. But when in Greece, let's say, wow. it's simply the Mediterranean. That's it. 
only in order to make things easier and that was basically for navigation purposes. There are more specific names to more uh, specific wow. parts of the sea. So uh, let's say that uh, roughly in between Greece and Turkey, the sea is called the Aegean. In between Greece and Africa, the sea is called the Sea of Crete and then the Libyan Sea. And then in between Greece and Italy, this is where we are, the Ionian. But all this is simply small parts of the huge historical Mediterranean. The water becomes almost green, this emerald green, transparent, crystal trees. clear. <laughs> yeah. Water's so clear. Look at that. You can literally, it's crystal clear. It's all boats going in and out, how cute. Let's walk around so we can see. It was really pretty as we came in, like going over the hills. <laughs> Sounds not bad. Sometimes it'd be very pebbly in Greece. Or black sand. I'll show you guys just how crystal clear that water is. You see my shadow, look, I don't know. Look at it, just pure. So clean. Ooh. Beautiful. Right, that was a quick stop. Back to the bus. The next wine tasting. Not exactly, but it's quite a secret to this place. She tries to keep it really discreet. There's always, of course, the days when uh, she needs to get uh, over one group, but uh, in most cases, this is not the usual, I mean, the, the really usual tour one would get. So pretty up here, it smells of honeysuckle. Look at the butterflies, look how many butterflies there are. Let me see them, but look, look at them all. On the, look. Tracy, this would be your worst nightmare. 
a friend that has a phobia of butterflies. <laughs> The butterflies around the lime trees. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> no, the lime trees butterflies. Hello. Hello. So this is tea. Cold tea with with mint and lime. Oh, it smells amazing. Olive oil. Okay, ladies, smile. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. usual guests, our usual visitors in Corfu. There's two who have become almost Corfiots. One of them, um, I would say he's, he's almost Greek. I mean, uh, we consider him as a local in a way. It's Tom Hanks. Tom uh -huh. Hanks and his half Greek wife, Rita Wilson, who have been uh, having property in Greece nearly 15 years now. They visit every year Tom Hanks, uh, Tom, uh, his house is uh, on the island of Antiparos in the Aegean Sea. And they spend uh, a long time there and a lot of time there. They visit uh, during the Greek Orthodox Easter and back again in the summertime. In Corfu, we've got uh, our regular visitor. Normally, 
he's here in the end of June, mid July, depending um, on board of his beautiful private um, yacht. It looks more like a sailing boat. Steven Spielberg and family who are visiting every year, every year. So not only can you, we're meeting at 1.15, but if you want to get a shuttle bus back, there's a free shuttle bus as well back to the boat, so they'll take us on. She's going to take us on a little walk first, let's go. Basically, was built between 1500 and early, I would say, 1800 more or less. Uh, the two buildings, the two major buildings uh, on this little space, which is called the Town Hall Square. Uh, one is used uh, as a public building, the one behind you, that's the actual Town Hall, the seat of the mayor of Porto. And uh, um, the other one is uh, the Roman Catholic Cathedral. This is it's used ever since it was first built in 1663. So both buildings go back to the 17th century, mid 17th century. Um, one began its career in a way as a theater and then later on in 1912, it was turned into uh, a public building. So the actual town hall opposite the Roman Catholic Cathedral for the 3000 members of the Roman Catholic community of Porto. It's the third largest religious community after the Greeks, and then the Anglican and Protestant community. This is another unusual thing in Corfu. We have many people, residents, uh, some of them over 30 years now, uh, from a British <coughs> origin, German, Dutch, Scandinavian, people who came uh, and uh, uh, they work. It's not just people who retired and then they found in Corfu the perfect place uh, to live. But uh, there's people who run their own businesses um, in tourism or not, and they happen to gather around the Anglican and Protestant community, which counts over 4,000 people. And then, last but not least, the Jewish community, with almost 67, 68 members at this moment. <laughs> Ooh. 
They were nice, weren't they? I don't drink water or that. Yeah, but it had no after, it was really smooth, it didn't, wasn't, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Fish is eating the skin off your feet. cushions and stuff. Thank you. Okay. No, thank you. Oh, you're a bit close to me for me. being Greek isn't it?
treat. We're going to check the treat out. Had a lovely time. Just sat. I mean, the wine was lovely. The place was lovely. I totally recommend the court. I think it was $79. I'll put it um, in the description below. Well, it's just a nice way to spend half a day. Corfu was really nice. So, yeah, I'm glad I got out. Even though it didn't mean getting up at stupid o'clock this morning. Now let's go and try a little treat.